So this morning we're looking at CBT. Theories, models, and methods. So what are the different phases of development in CBT to be looked at? How does CBT in general work for couples? So I'm trying to give an overview of CBT as a whole and then comparing the two specific models from German, the CBT couple therapy and the integrative behavioral couple therapy. Okay, um, so the overview, we're looking at the phases and how it works in general. So CBT, basically they translated over from behavior therapy and then cognitive therapy into um, couples. And Stuart and Jacobson looked at this, so this is all out of German, okay, uh, a few other books. So you have the old behavior couples therapy, BCT. That is where couples therapy from this point of view began, was coming out of behavior. They looked at how couples were behaving and said we need to improve upon the behavior. And so hence the old skills training in couples counseling came from. We've got to teach them how to communicate. So that communication model, they, they don't know how to listen to each other. So it becomes basic skills training and behavior change. And that's where behavior exchanges. You must, for every one negative, you must do five positive behaviors type processes. Okay. <coughs> then the next phase, and that was dominant for most of couple therapy and influenced quite a lot of couple therapy, even through to today. A lot of schools still use the idea of skills training for couples. They haven't got the basic relationship skills. And that's where like a lot of married pre marriage prep focus on that. Then the new phase um, was marked by the development of integrative behavioral couples therapy. Okay, and um, they were then looking at a more balanced position, looking at a development of greater mutual acceptance around patterns of interaction and dealing with what Gottman calls perpetual issues. Those more of the same fights, those fights you always have. Yeah, every couple have that fight. Mm -hmm. There's that sticking point that you can never get away from. Yeah. Is, is it true that it's more frequent than normal than there's a problem? Yeah, there is a problem here, but sometimes it's just a matter of incompatibility. I want to watch football, you want to watch EastEnders. I don't like you know, you don't like football, I don't like EastEnders. There's nothing incompatible about it, it's just we have different interests interest and stats. So you're not going to be compatible in every school. Yeah, right? exactly. So those are what they term perpetual issues. Issues where you never really quite can. I want to go to uh, Maviva and have a party all night and you want to lie on the beach and do nothing. Mm. You know, those kinds of clashes. Again, there was a development on behavior therapy. They're still focusing on the behavior, but how to manage and accept them, we'll deal with them more, more detail. Um, and looking at self-regulation as part of that. How you regulate and manage the affect. Um, becomes the next sort of phase, and that's where the cognitive elements also come into play. They begin to think about thinking and how do couples think about each other and how do they think about themselves as a couple. What are their thinkings about being a couple as well also begins to enter into that element. So cognitive behavioral couples therapy, CBCT is it referred to as. It's quite well researched and um, grounded in social learning and social exchange theories. So Bandura's modeling and the idea of the exchange process. Individual behaviors are influenced by his environment and so the marriage is seen as a kind of environment and it focuses on the exchange of positive and negative behaviors and the communication skills. <coughs> Again, pretty much quite surface level focus on a lot of the work that they do. Um, and works a lot from an educational perspective. Again, that's the collaborative teacher element that the therapist does. Um, and they work on practicing that communication processes. So CBT 
T focus is still very much focused on those behavior interchanges and communication exercises. The therapist listens and guides the couple for effective uh, communication and tries to deal with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Okay? And monitoring sort of the strong effective response. Remember the four horsemen? Yeah. Not the Christian four horsemen, the yeah. couple's four horsemen. <coughs> Criticism, contempt, defensiveness and stonewalling. And so CBT therapy is particularly focusing on these four horsemen and how these impact on couples and their interaction. So criticism, yeah, were you attacking the character rather than the behavior? Yeah, more or less all of them. They yeah. Contempt, again, you, you're doing the person. Defensiveness, you're not prepared to hear feedback. Stonewalling, you're just staying out and you disappear. Um, so you've got to keep an eye out for those. And if these elements are present, as Gottman says, 96% accuracy, if these elements are, are present, you can kiss the relationship goodbye. If they're entrenched. They're pretty deadly. Yeah. If they're entrenched. Yeah. If they're persistent. And they're persistent and all four are there in a strong way, you're not going to get very far. So where they're looking at is they're trying to evaluate the relationship based on unreasonable standards. Do we hold unreasonable expectations of our partner? Do we expect them to be something that they cannot be? Will your Prince Charming meet Prince Charming's standards or is he a ragavala? You know? So what they're looking at are two levels of distress. It's the appraisal of the event, so that's the cognitive element, how they're thinking about elements, and they look at two levels of distress. Primary distress, where one partner's are, needs are not being met, so connection, intimacy, autonomy, whatever it might be, that's primary. And secondary is what the, when the partner uses wrong strategies to address conflict. So the partner's solution becomes the problem. Yeah. So she wants more intimacy <coughs> and he deals with it by ignoring her. Again, the classic things are dealing with the same issues just from a different perspective. Yeah. So you've got to address how have the primary me needs not been met or how secondary distress coming out of not meeting the primary needs. That's a two-level model. Quite simple, straightforward, dealing with the here and now without any major change. <coughs> it's fairly short work as well, 8 to 25 sessions. First two to three sessions are assessment followed by feedback where the couple and therapist define the treatment goals Socratic questioning and guided discovery are the primary models used, or techniques used. The straightforward CBT elements are just transferred over onto couples' work without any real adaptations. So, Socratic questioning, you all know. Asking a client a series of questions <coughs> to evaluate the logic behind their beliefs and how they got there. Guided discovery involves creating experiences to allow them to have a different perspective. So role playing, pros and cons, role reversal. <coughs> One of the, the more common ones that you use, have you ever tried being your partner? <coughs> that you ro reverse roles and you talk to your partner as you talk to them. And you experience how you are experienced. It can be very funny, but it actually really does highlight, oh, okay, is that how I come across? Right, all right. It takes a lot of trust to do that and to accept the feedback. Hmm. Oh, I um, integrative behavior couple therapy adds emotional acceptance to increase positive feelings. 
is an integrative behavior. This is not integrative cognitive behavioral therapy, it's integrative behavioral therapy. The focus is still on the behavior. <coughs> so this comes from Jacobson and Christian. So the early stages, partners tolerate differences in personality and see them as a source of attraction often. The op opposites attract tough idea. But that very attraction to the opposite becomes the very source of your complaint later on. Be strong and silent tough. Now you want him to talk to you. He's a strong and silent tough. He's not going to talk to you. That's why you were attracted to him. Now you're asking him to be something he's not. Hang on. What do you want? <laughs> the intimate, warm, gushing type or the strong, silent type? Yeah? So the very thing that attracts becomes the thing that begins to push away later on in the relationship. Those characteristics that partners think they can change in their partner. <coughs> I can make him better. I can heal him. I can uh, make her more loved are the very things that will drive you up the wall. I have a real experience that with my sister-in-law, uh, Mary Jono, he's this great artist. He's really going to be a great photographer one day. I'll just support him and he can get through his masters. Then, then he'll just make it. We're still waiting to this stage 20 years on whether he's going to do his masters or not. Jono is still riding motorbikes and playing golf. <laughs> he takes brilliant photographs when he does, but he's not particularly interested. Yeah. yeah. Classic, I can change them. Yeah. Not going to work. But don't couples change their depths to each other? Yes. Some they do, and that you begin to fit and accommodate, and that's part of that increased acceptance, emotional acceptance. That doing as well things that you, you usually do. Yes. Mm. But that's acceptance. That's, that's true acceptance. But when there's a point where you can't accept that, that's when the clash happens. And there's a major shift. And the polarization. So when you have these differences where they can't be accommodated, you have polarization, discontent, concern, vilification, and all the four horsemen come to the fore. That's because you took him that. You were aware yeah. of that from the beginning. Mm. Mm. But you know, don't want those things. You want yeah. more. Yeah, of course. And that's why yes. it's the degree to which the person can meet your need or not becomes the issue. Mm. And if he remains a strong, silent type and you don't want him to be emotional and gushy, you're never going to get that. <coughs> I think I've given you the example where I said on an offhand comment to a couple towards the end of a session saying, and they said, you know, you're not going to make him what he's not. And that was challenging her to accept this is who he is. Not tolerance, not just, oh God, this is what I've got, but a genuine acceptance of him as this person. And when he came back to the next session, it had all changed because you suddenly saw him, this is who he is, he's not going to change. How do we live with this? How do we make this work? Because what if you meet somebody that they perceive to be what we want? But that's your projection. We get to know them and they're totally different from what they yeah, perceive. Yeah, that's be. where this comes in. That's where that conflict comes in. That's your projection. You made him Prince Charming when he's not. Did he portray that? Mm -hmm. Did he portray it or did you project it? And we identify with him. Did you have a the identification? That's what you wanted him to be. Yeah. 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 He never has been. Mm. <laughs> um, Invariably, that is what you want him to be. If they played that game, then they were psychopathic or narcissistic and they're playing art well, and manipulate. They identify with their own production. Yes. So he's like. Yeah. Uh, projecting. They make you feel. Make you, they know what you want and they know it, so they make you feel. Remember, you also are projecting onto them and accepting that game. You're playing the game. Instead of really, instead of seeing the other signs and symptoms. Not realizing. That. Yeah. It's like just Martin and uh, Debbie. When Mar when Debbie said, "I want him to be like me," to present his own feeling, his feeling like yeah. like me. Yeah. What's gonna happen? So in integrative behavior therapy, they're looking at both and the interaction between 
the agent will behave in the receiver, so who starts and who, who responds? And to increase acceptance reduces the conflict and becomes the catalyst for change. So the whole thing is around acceptance, not just tolerance. Not just putting up with the behavior. <coughs> Yeah, this is this is in a sense Rogerian, accepting them as to who they are as a person. Then you can address the behaviour in relation to that. Sorry, just mm. to go back to that point. Um, if society kind of you know, sees men as that French charming, so mm. how then are you projecting if you buy you buy into that? You, you play Cinderella. You will only accept Prince Charming if you're playing the other role of society. If you don't play Cinderella who needs to be rescued, then the Prince Charming projection doesn't have to be activated. If you're strong and capable and you don't need him to rescue you, then they don't have to do that behavior, you'll see the other behaviors. He can then allow his vulnerabilities to show because you're strong enough to hold them. Again, it's that projection, interjection, identification processes of, of who's carrying what in the relationship. So if you don't allow yourself to be strong and independent, then he has to carry that all. So if you allow yourself to be strong, then he can show his vulnerability. But his strength remains when you need it, and that's where the balance comes in, it's not at the extremes. What about, you know, when you perform stuff sometimes, and the guys, the character and personality, you love the guy, but then the behaviour is not nice. Is that why women stay with them? Because they love the guys, but even if the behaviour is not nice? I don't. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, you're buying into a fantasy. Yeah, it's about a presentation, the way how you want to get perceived, how you perceive it, and how you know you want to get perceived by you. It's a game at the end of the day. Mm. No, you're playing into why are you accepting bad behavior when you're saying but you this? But he's presenting you X but you seeing Y. That's your projection. Mm. Not a reality based question. The reality is just, what are you actually getting? What's the evidence? You're getting a guy who's treating you badly. Well, why are you staying with him? What are you getting out of it? That's what he wants people to see, the nice guy. But mm. actually, when actually you're he might not be the nice guy. Because if he treats one woman bad, doesn't mean he's saying he treats somebody else bad, does it? Might. People are fairly consistent in their relationships. They treat one person bad, they don't treat other people bad. But again, it's not in isolation. Your interaction is always a two-part process and within the context. So Gottman talks about that some of these problems can't be solved. Instead, the aim to solve them, the sources of conflict are turned into sources of inf intimacy. In a, through the acceptance process, that becomes a process of intimacy. By accepting that he is the strong silent type, you give him that space and then allows him when he can to come towards you. Okay, it might not be ideal, and that's the reality base of cognitive behavioral therapies. Is they're trying to work on the reality sense. You're not going to get your ideal. You're going to get a reality picture. And can you live with that? And that's something you have to think of as a couple. Is this good enough? come back to that element. <coughs> and Godman calls this as the mutual trap. When partners try and change each other, polarization occurs and you get stuck. <coughs> so when you want him to be something that they're not, and you want her to be something that she's not, you're just going to get stuck in the trap. Because what happens when somebody tells you to change? We get defensive. <coughs> we get stubborn. We stick and cringe. We go out and we feel it's an attack. Again, it's accepting, okay, this is who you are. What can you offer me? How much intimacy can you give me? And you as the partner need to 
evaluate that. Is this e enough, good enough for you or not? Do you need more? Do you need less? <coughs> so, <coughs> in uh, you need to look for the mutual trap. How are the behaviors keeping each other stuck in integrative therapy? So, so the effort to change the other creates a defensiveness and the partner who wants to change the other experiences frustration and hopelessness. So you have the theme, you're not, you're too gushy or you're too silent or whatever it might be. The polarization and the mutual trap is your formulation in CBT terms. Okay? So you're looking at those elements. The theme, polarization. What is the issue? Intimacy, closeness, distance busyness, whatever it might be. How is that being polarized? Who carries what? How do they, they how do they set the trap for each other? You're never around, you know, you're always silent, whenever I need you, you've got more important things to do, whatever it might be. And that becomes what you're looking at. And again you look at the history of relationships, the individual's family, previous relationships, all will show you that. People are consistent in their relationships. They don't change easily. <coughs> they might learn things from themselves in previous relationships that they can change. So in broad terms, how does CBT work for couples? So looking at behaviors, to understand triggers and expectations, beliefs and attitudes, and to try and practice healthy, realistic alternatives. So five-step process, identify and acknowledging individual expectations and perceptions. That's really exploring the expectations of the relationship. What were they expecting to get from this relationship? How did they meet? What, what, what was promised? What has been delivered? <laughs> what has been not. And what has not been delivered? Yes. And that's where the idea, you'll, you'll see there's lots of books that are out there about the marriage contract. The unconscious and conscious contract, you know, and, and what do you formulate and how have you formulated your relationship? Is it a conscious contract or is it an unconscious one? Yeah. Yeah. You then look for the counterproductive triggers, yeah. beliefs and behaviors, the things that are causing the sticky points, okay. agree differences and accept toler tolerable ranges. Okay. So that's where you explore. What is the the most you can get, what is the least you can get? One of the useful questions to ask somebody to do is, what is the smallest behavior change you can do this week with your partner? Not big one, the smaller. Um, that is the goal setting. Hmm, it's not a goal setting, but you're getting them to engage in their range of behavior. So you're getting them at the bottom point. Uh, I can bring a tea in bed each morning or once in this week or whatever it might be. Uh, I'll make sure I'm not watching EastEnders when he comes home. Whatever it might be that causing those triggers. And don't believe me, EastEnders is a big trigger. I've never watched it. Football women. Football women. Football women. EastEnders to me. Are you serious? Number of times where husbands are coming so the wife's sitting on the sofa watching a soap East End is Emmerdale, whatever it might be, and she doesn't even greet me. But that's another thing because she lives in somebody else's world. Mm. I've been earning the bread all day and she doesn't even bother getting up off the sofa. Not uncommon, people. Not uncommon. So you're agreeing a range of behavior change, and these are behavior changes, not personality transformations. You focused on the behavior, how they think and how they behave. Okay. Identify and practice new behaviors based on shared values, respect, empathy, trust, tolerance, again, all of the teaching elements that go with CBT. Agree a new emotional contract <coughs> that becomes a core reality base. This expresses the changes that each partner commits to and forms the basis of the future relationship. Okay. So they are focusing on the emotion that the partners want but they're looking at the behaviors that will help deliver that emotional contract. And nine times out of ten, what you're having when couples come to you is 
really the dance of closeness and distance. It's nine times out of ten the, the, the basic. You had to whittle it all down. That's what it comes down to. Um, we've not got enough intimacy. You two distance. Yeah, is often the issue. Um, so in integrative in comparison to, to CBT as a twin goals of acceptance and uh, change as a positive outcome. So it's building on this very similar kind of elements that CBT is doing and it uses a range of strategies consistent with behavior theoretical framework. This coming very much from classical and operant conditioning. So they use a lot of those behavior reinforcements. How do you want, you know, if you want something good, reward it. Reinforce it positively. And so coming from behaviorism, so social learning principles and Skinner, uh, they do a functional analysis, so very similar to CBT, and develop that through. Okay, so this is a reminder of the comparative framework that we're using. So I'm going to look at both of those now in a little more detail. <coughs> Considering the comparative framework, uh, can we, for example, add the actual uh, different, I mean, uh, uh, framework, the first maybe develop a bit like more deep, while the second, as we apply to the case study, can be developed further? I mean, the word count is a big issue in this mm -hmm. society now, really. It's a huge issue. Because unless we not consider a lot of these elements, or just we touch it, just touch badly, it. Okay. Like, otherwise it's a massive issue because they are You're touching most on. of them get in integrative approaches so they are very mm. so they similar then you say so so this is, I'm not looking at the comparative more than a thousand words it's, it's brief you're touching on the very basics to, to demonstrate that you've understood the difference between two models it's not a big discussion it's not a big comparison it's an acknowledgement it takes lots of words out of the case. Yeah. Yeah. Me, I'm 2,000 words out. Well, it's very difficult. I'm going to be at least 6, 700 really condensed. Yeah. Yeah. So, use what you feel is, is appropriate out of this framework. You might not need to put in background. Background might be similar. In common areas, say, they both operate from. That's it. I, I I just think, I mean, what I'm trying to do is to, as I'm going to be using like um, emotional focus therapy, then in my case study, then what I'm, I expand that on the case study, on the case study mm -hmm. without like doing all the theoretical kind of theoretical part to be, and then I just start. It's up to you. This is how you want to devise and decide on your own assignment. This is level six, people. You need to make that choice for yourself. Not easy. No, not easy. Uh, can we consider more issues for out of the case study or just need to focus on one? What do you feel is appropriate? What is the major issue primarily? <laughs> primarily, okay. Yeah. yeah, focus on what are, are the major issues in the case study. One or two. You don't have to deal with everything, that's impossible. Okay. You're dealing with what is the major presenting problem? Or, or simply, yeah, sure uh, for sure, because one lead to the other. Mm. Can I ask something? To me, what I compare is was EFT because I'm using for the case study and the first way DCT. So it's not of this two. It's the like the, the proper the, the first. Oh, it's up to you. So I can do that. You know, I'll tell you. I'm dictating what you must compare. Yeah. It's up to you. So I don't need compare to compare two more. Because the DCT is the one that is most used. But I can use the. Up to you. I can compare the DCT. Up to you. Can we justify our ch our choice in terms of? Obviously, Macaba evidence basis oh. research. Like, uh, why one can be more indicative on a large kind of, like, without going details. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to the assignment later on. Oh, sorry. Okay? So, trying to compare um, as best I could, for, and I've, I took this from both the chapters in, Got in, in Gottman, uh, not Gottman, German. German. Um, and have a look at this, okay? So, cognitive behavioral couple therapy on the left and integrative on the right. Um, and integrative is seen as the third wave of behavioral therapies. But remember, it's behavioral therapies, not cognitive therapies. 
Um, Again, very similar kinds of influences, behavior, cognitive therapy, information processing. Mm. Uh, a lot of people missing today. Um, integrative creative traditional couple um, behavior therapies, um, focused on behavior exchange, communication, and problem solving. Keys to promote. The emotional acceptance, which is what they saw as the missing link in previous um, behavior therapies. What they looked at was what are the outcomes of behavior therapies compared to other couple therapies and found there was no real difference. And found, okay, how could they improve that? And by addressing the emotional link, they were able to bring about that change. So, how do they conceptualize healthy versus unhealthy marriages? So, cognitive behavioral therapy employs a broader contextual perspective in defining a healthy relationship. Healthy is defined as one in that contributes to the growth and well-being of both partners, in which partners <coughs> function together as a team and relate their physical and social environment in an adaptive fashion. So you're a team, you adapt, you grow, you shift, you work together. Um, and couples often refer to themselves as a good team, as a good fit, in terms of that. Now if you think about yourself as a couple, what makes you a team? Why, why are you compatible? You know, if you, if you use it almost in, in sporting senses. When I look at my wife and myself, we're a good team because she's the ideas person and I'm the completer using the Maya Briggs. She's the planner, I'm the finisher completer. She has the ideas of what needs to be done in the house or garden, I get it to happen. Okay? And couples will have those kinds of things. I don't have the vision to plan a bloody garden. <laughs> Somebody give me a plan, I can make it work. Yeah. We discuss it and share and I'll criticize and say, yes, this is feasible, this isn't. No, you can't do that, it's unrealistic. <laughs> and that's the idea of being a team and working together. They contribute to the growth and development and well-being and the needs of each partner. Okay. Let's just go to the next slide. In, their dis in the happy couples in integrative behavior therapies are able to confront <coughs> differences with greater acceptance and tolerance. So they can deal with the differences and accept those differences. In cognitive behavioral therapy, distressed couples are around negative behaviors, what they call sentiment override. The idea that once you get into a negative cycle, you get stuck in that negative cycle and you only see the negatives. And you respond to the negative. So when the partner offers you a positive, you give back a negative. Because you don't trust it. Because you don't see it. You see it as, an, as a negative. So if you hand out cold pricklies the whole time, you'll get cold pricklies back. You need to give out more warm fuzzies than cold pricklies. Is a way of talking about it. In integrative behavior, couple therapy, a distressed couple, again, is around the destructive ways in which they deal with those disagreements and misfits. They're looking at that mutual trap um, and the non-acceptance. And the three destructive elements are mutual coercion, vilification and polarization. These are variations on the four horsemen. So think about what does your model say in terms of healthy and unhealthy? So in CBT they're focusing on the negative thinking processes and in the integrative they're focusing on the behavior ranges. So what's the role of the therapist in each of these approaches? Very similar. Therapist is active, collaborative, very traditional CBT approach in working together in therapy. Okay? Um, the therapist owns a, a more didactic role, provides a rationale, recommendations and homework assignments. So it's very, very similar <coughs> in both approaches. In integrative behavior therapy, it's active, directive, 
uh, forming interventions, high degree of flexibility, you're looking and highlighting the function of behaviors. Whereas in CBT, you're dealing with the negative thinking processes, how they think of their partner, how they think of themselves as a couple. So in couples CBT approach, you're dealing with two levels of thoughts, with how they think about their partner, <coughs> but you've also got that invisible, how they think of them as a couple, which is a, a new element for CBT cognitive work. So what do you think when your partner does X, and how does this make you feel or think about being a couple? So when he stands you up at the school, parents evening because he's got to work, where does this leave you and how does this leave you as a couple? So you're asking two levels of questions for them. Uh, he, he's let me down and he's embarrassed me because they think I'm a single parent. Because he's never there. So again, very much the traditional role of cognitive and behavioral kind of therapists very engaged, directive, collaborative, homework setting, goal setting, and working towards in a very real practical skills-based manner, which is where both of the models are coming from. Um, set the pace of the sessions, you work collaboratively, you monitor the time use and the agenda. It's again very much CBT stuff. Um, Adopts the role of facilitator, creating a safe support environment which the couples can address difficult issues. And that's always the key element no matter what approach you're taking. To create a safe and secure environment so couples can discuss their differences. If they're not going to feel held in the session, they're not going to open up. It's a common factor. Yeah, it's a common factor across all approaches. There has to be the safety in the session for them to give the difference that you will hold them in that conflict and not allow them to self-destruct. Um, so the integrative behavioral therapy focuses a lot more on the histories and how these behaviors have come about and how classical and operant conditioning has reinforced those patterns of behavior and begin to try and address and change some of those elements. Again, multiple roles of educator, teacher, coach, skills provider, facilitator, very similar, irrespective. Okay. In integrative, and I suppose in all therapies, language is used as an important tool of intervention. How you frame things becomes important. You basically are interpreting. Who says CBT doesn't interpret? But you're framing. Does. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it does. <laughs> Okay, so often what you're doing in the behavior terms is you're framing the one partner's solution. You know, he's, she's always nagging me, so I, would, I get busy. That's their solution <coughs> to avoid being overly nagged. You're framing their solution as the problem, you know, and that it was done as a solution. I was just giving her space to cool down. But now that's become the problem, so how can you still give her, contain her rather than give her space? You're trying to contain her by giving her space. It's depending on the, the situation, you frame it so that the behavior appears positive but, and then allows them to return to a better position rather than the extreme range of the behavior to an earlier range of that behavior. Assessment, treatment and planning. Very similar, again, <coughs> a structured assessment process takes place for both of them. Um, one focuses on behavior, the other focuses on cognition. It's a real difference. They're looking at the <coughs> cognitive, behavioral, and affective elements in CBT approaches. Uh, the therapist clarifies partners goals for treatment, respective positions, and areas of concern. And in integrative behavior therapy, you're looking at the controlling stimuli and the change in problematic behavior. So the focus is one's on behavior much more <coughs> than the other's on the thinking processes. Um, in cognitive behavior, the focus is on, on strengths. So rather than picking up on the negatives, what works? 
One of the important questions to ask any couples is what's working in the relationship. It's very easy for couples to forget to look at what's good. They're only coming with what's bad. Well, what is good in your relationship? What is working? What is an area you don't fight about? How come you don't fight in that area? Oh, we agree on managing the children. Uh, we are okay about money. Um, you know. So what makes that work? What are those elements? And you draw out those strengths. So you're able to discuss these issues. Why does it fall down when you just try to move it to these issues? Okay. And because it's focusing and the, 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 the theoretical rationale from CBT side is they s couples are on a negative track. They get stuck on the negative and stay on the negative. Okay, so it's important to broaden the field of view. Take off their negative glasses and put on positive glasses as well. So they have both lenses. So you're looking at self common intervention method uh, processes or self reports, interviews, observational approaches. But a lot of these approaches use questionnaires. There's a range of questionnaires of behavior, conflict questionnaires, intimacy questionnaires that they use and get scores and measure against. I don't like them personally. I'm not that kind of therapist. It's too technical for me. Again, integrative behavior therapy, they're doing a functional analysis which forms the, the source of their interventions throughout. Um, the primary goal is the case formulation and the treatment plan. The formulation then looks at the three key elements, what is the key theme, how they become polarized, and what is the mutual track. straightforward goal setting it is very clear it's very above board we are dealing with cognitive elements and behavioral elements you work together they set specific goals you collaborate with them so goal setting is very similar in both approaches so how do they do it so in CBT approach recognizing behavior cognitions and emotions are all interrelated they take it classic CBT approach and deal with that. Uh, in integrative, they deal with acceptance strategies, tolerance strategies, and change strategies. Okay? So, uh, CBT also has some particular strategies. So, in CBT, you have three broad strategies. Interventions for modifying behavior, interventions that address cognitions, interventions that are focused on emotions. Classic CBT skills, guided behavior, skills-based interventions, Socratic questioning guided discovery, uh, restricted or minimizing of emotions, containing the experience and expression of emotions. In CBT, in integrative, you're looking at acceptance strategies of empathic joining and unified detachment. So how can you step back from this rather than react to it? How can you just say, this is who he is, he is the strong silent type, he ain't going to dash. Okay. They have tolerance strategies as our partners to let go of their efforts to change one another. Okay, so how many times have you said, I wish you wouldn't do that. They still continue to do it because that's who they are. And it's like my stepson washing the dishes at home. He sees what's in the sink. He doesn't bother looking left or right at the sink. He washes what's in the sink. No matter how many times that in the dishes there and there's dishes there that need washing as well, he just doesn't see them. <laughs> Well, this is going on for six years. So I finally accepted that that's who he is. He washes what's in the sink. I put everything in the sink. Right, <laughs> I've changed my behavior rather than getting him to try and change his behavior. Same idea with couples. Okay? You, you, deal, you change your behavior. So very much like a tough love approach. You change your behavior to bring in the change in them. Instead of trying to get them to change, you change how you are behaving in relation to them. Classic operant conditioning, classical conditioning principles at play. Okay? Your behavior impacts on them. So, get my stepson to do the dishes, I put them all in the sink. I've changed my behavior instead of moaning at him making me feel bad. Okay? So, techniques are pointing out positive features, practicing uh, 
negative behavior in the session, so to look at the impact, faking negative behavior between sessions, quite sure what they mean by that one. Uh, change strategies is behavior, exchange techniques, communication, problem solving, training. So classic communication skills. So how do they see about change? How does change come about? Uh, so they're really looking at relationship schematic processing. That's the term they use for it in CBT terms. The degree to which an individual process information in terms of circular relationship processes. It's like they are all similar in kind of what was that? Why particular relationship they all have a circular casualty? We're all talking the same stuff, we're all looking at the same picture using different language. Yeah. This is the Tower of Babel language. We're all talking about the same thing using different language. Maybe just focus on different aspects. Okay, Yes. So if you're focusing on the same issues, the same problems, using different language and focusing on, uh, is this, we see this nut is more important than this nut. That's the real difference. So, it's very important in, in integrative behavior, that's the behavior changes. You focus on the recipient of the behavior and the agent of behavior, and you're looking at the behavior changes. Okay? So one's dealing with the thinking processes and the circular elements, and the other's dealing with uh, those key elements. Um, the key element in some of the CBT, and this is probably valid for most processes in research done, particularly on the, the CBT approach, is therapists who are able to process information quickly and respond in the moment are more effective with this approach. Okay. So it's not going away and coming back, it's about working in the here and now very strongly. And from my own experience, that's for all couple therapies in fact. You've got to be able to pick up those nuances in the moment and deal with them to make them work. Um, from the integrative behavior approach, there are, in every relationship there are unsolvable problems that the person is unwilling or unable to change. And improvement in these cases will be needed by increased acceptance and tolerance. Mm -hmm. okay. You're going to ask them to be something they're not, then why are you with them? Find the person who you want. You know, if you want somebody who is emotional and gushy and intimate and you don't want the strong silent type, don't choose the strong silent type. Mm -hmm. yeah. And paradoxically, by accepting who they are for what they are you reduce your attempts to change them so your anxieties and, and pressures go down and you actually can learn to work with them better um, you know, look at my own relationship with my wife come to accept that I need a degree of, of, of space but I couldn't just go and do my own thing that created too much anxiety in her so we work to develop compromises and where I now get my space is up on my love map. She knows where I am, it's a safe space, she can also come there. There's no other woman around to put her at risk. <laughs> to feel as if she's going to be at risk that I might have an affair. Mm. Okay? No, that's very important. Very important. It's very important. So, that's the compromise and agreed way of managing mm. her anxiety and I get my need for space and distance. So I'll spend six hours on the allotment on Saturday um, just being myself. Mm. You know, cut off, don't need people, don't want to connect because I had it the whole week. Oh, you know, okay. That's great. And then she comes down later and we discuss and she helps me out a bit then we carry on. And that's the compromise process around and it's a simple behavior change. And acceptance and tolerance of the different elements. How good are these approaches? CBT has a roughly between 33 and 67 percent of couples had satisfaction after receiving it and in a 6 to 12 month follow up 30 percent of couples who had recovered during therapy had relapsed so not bad yeah. not bad right in integrative 69 percent of couples demonstrated a follow up two years later and they said 80 percent compared to couples treated with traditional behavior couple therapy 64 percent mm -hmm. uh, 80 percent saying they felt a lot better and 
69% two year follow up, that's pretty good going. So interpretive behaviour therapy works. So have a look at the readings that are available. We take it from there. <laughs> I'm present doctor, we no longer have the same printer as. <laughs> you, you all know what printer is. Yeah. What is app? It's an app where you it's it's select photos posts. of the internet yeah. where you post it's things and people can share them and look at them. It's one of the Instead of having to buy the magazines, you now just have a collection on your web page. 